Hello, YouTube. Liverpool fan in Japan. It's Miyazaki Man Sai. We have just beaten Arsenal 2 1 in our US preseason tour, and slot border slot machine is in full effect. Let's get into it. Now, I can't believe how much of a change to the philosophy of this team, the tactical awareness and tactical setup, has been implemented already by our man, the shiny one, on the slot, considering it's just been a short space of time since obviously Jurgen Klopp left at the tail end of last season. On the slot's come in. He's only been able to work with the youth players, the rotational players, the players that haven't gone away to international duty. But there's a few tactical implementations I want you to be aware of straight away. Defensive transitions, the zones of marking and pressing, where we position our number 10s and how we break the offensive press from the opposition, get ourselves into prominent errors and play from there. Especially getting men in front of their box, having composure and a guile to give the gifted players in front of their box and break down their setup to give ourselves a clear goal scoring opportunity. Now before I get to the tactics board, special mentions. Fabio Carvalho showed what he's all about. He's got that relationship with Harvey Elliott. He drifts inside from the left wing. He's a left-sided playmaker, wide playmaker, in the way that Salah is a right-sided wide playmaker these days as well. What he has the ability to do is turn a man, very silky, close ball control. To get the most out of him, you're gonna to have to give him ball to feet and then work his magic in tight spaces to try to fashion opportunities. He's the one that switched the ball out wide to Salah on the right-hand side, bring it in to Soboslai under pressure over to into Harvey Elliott, who sorted his feet, quick step over and delicious chip ball with the right, waiting to slot Fabio Carvalho, who instigated the move, into position to slot it in. Arna slots ideal vision of a number 10, slotting in a late runner from deep position while the higher players are occupying opposition's back line. They never knew what hit them. But it's about the execution, the bravery, the conviction and the courage to get the ball to the players in front of Arsenal's back lines, in between the lines. Now what you notice with Arna slots system is he plays in thirds, right? The defensive third has a very, very tactical setup to allow the ball to get forwards, but not instantly get forwards for a build up because you have the next third where Curtis Jones, Dominic Soboslai, and Harvey Elliott sit in a position to receive the ball and play make the ball in a patient build up until the right opportunity to allow the progressive ball forward into the next third line. Now, we don't rely on the fullbacks to bomb forward and get into those prominent positions to be our outlet, be our creativity, because they're involved in the build-up to play the ball inside into the middle third until there's a probing chance for the ball to go through the line. So that's very, very interesting because that means we won't see Andy Robertson or Connor Bradley bursting a gut to get into position and shooting them off so they can work with the Lucha Diaz and Mo Salah to fashion the opportunity. It's going to be more about interchange in the midfields, game intelligence, double pivot, Curtis Jones, Sobosly, one pushing up, one feeling in the gap, the third man opening the space on the lateral as well. And I feel Graven Birch and McAllister have a very, very prominent role in that particular pass and move Liverpool groove style. And it even suits Otaru Endo and Bacetic who love to pass through the lines. This is more around conviction and lines of passing, confidence to turn facing forwards and play the ball before the opponents can set up. And this utilizes ball players in midfield rather than destroyers. Destroying is a great asset to have to win the ball over, but it's actually a system effort to win the ball. And in terms of winning the ball, if you notice, Arneslot plays a Milan Christmas tree triangle formation, congesting the middle because he forces the opposition out wide. There's no keen press in the middle until he set up the triangle and forces the opposition out wide. But as soon as the ball goes out wide, that is where the trap is set. The full back, the left sided eight, left winger, close in until the opposition is lost in the Bermuda Triangle and they drown under the constant pressure where they have to rotate the ball out or rotate or try risky ball forwards in which case Kwanzaa and Seth Vandenberg will eat it up and speaking of Seth Vandenberg he's done his prospects no harm because his pace looks absolutely vital and Kwanzaa looks like the steady eddy calm mature senior figure in centre-back position he really is a Van Dyke junior isn't he and game by game, a SEP shows his capabilities that can only be a good thing for either an increased transfer value or as a prominent figure in Liverpool's upcoming season, hopefully in rotation and not just on the bench. But let's talk about Harvey Elliott. Now, he looks delicious, delicious in that number 10 role. He always had the techers. He has the confidence. People were scared about his physicality, his pace, but he has the ability to find a room and roam into the pockets. And it's up to the team to work out the angles to pick him out in those transient areas for him to do the damage. And my goodness, two assists in this particular game. What can you say? 
over to Mo Salah. Mo Salah being nearer to the goal is absolutely critical to our success this season because when he doesn't have to beat the man on the outside or really work the space to enable him to get closer to the goal, then he is a ferocious force. And Zinchenko never handles Salah well. Now that is a game-winning condition, getting Salah one-on-one -on -one versus Zinchenko in the half space, not out wide. And that is where we cause a lot of damage. And Salah's pace, power and finesse in finishing, if he can do that this season, we're going we're gonna to have a good season. And Diogo Jota... The man with a plan and a man on fire. Jota and Salah come back looking very, very fit and keen on action and sharp in the press. Diogo Jota held the ball up. He's got a mystifying ability to dominate in the air and really hit a good through ball in the air. I remember one down the line to Mane. He hit a nice one into Salah today to set things off as well. Okay, he's not the clinical finisher of old in terms of the pre-season efforts so far. He hit the post with the left foot and obviously he, he skewed one of his cut back to him on the right foot as well. But better now than in the Premier League, right? And he's always reliable. He's actually an underrated playmaker as well in between the lines. And as he picks up that sharpness and works on that sharpness on the PlayStation controller, he'll really, really hit an inch within the post, bounce with the post. No goalkeeper would save it. And looking forward to him turning on against Ipswich. Now he has to keep Darwin Nunes at bay because Darwin Nunes will be chomping at the bit if he's not chomping or something else to really get into the starting lineup. And it's interesting to see because slot ball really, really puts emphasis on getting three playmakers into the 10 position in behind the forward to slot them through. Now let's get to the tactics board and show what I mean. So it is interesting to see slot go of two ballers at the base of midfield, right? It's not that destroy, it's not the Wataru Endo. He goes strong right from the start and he wants a ball playing midfield who are comfortable getting on the front foot to control the game, to dominate the game, to absolutely enforce and empower the will of the players on this game. Stamp the Arna slot, slot machine style. He doesn't want to go rough and tumble into the opposition, win the ball, fight and congest. He wants the ball, he wants to hurt you with the ball. And he even mentioned in the previous quote, he said, the more we have the ball, the more opportunities we have to score. It's not about turning over the opposition, the gen gen press, winning the ball high up is the best playmaker. It's kill the opposition with the ball. Hence, Jones sub side, they actually started in double pivot previously in, in a game last season to control the base of the midfield. Now, what's very, very interesting is when Simicast got into this position here, you'd expect him to play the one-two, get around and whip it in with an overload on the right-hand side to finish it off with follow-ups, right? Jürgen Klopp style. We were very, very good at that type of um, game. But when Simkas got into his position, his first, first thought was to play it square, right? And what we always had was players in these positions, in these positions waiting for the square ball, waiting for the opportunity, waiting for the opportunity to then make the run. Now, if the ball goes into here, you'd expect it to be Simikas or Carvalho with a left-footed whip cross outside the foot into Carvalho to shoot, right? That is very, very interesting to me because what that means is Arsenal's defenders can't play the offside trap and Arsenal's defenders will always have the play in front of them, right? So they don't know when to commit and who to commit to because of the fact that we've got the rotational players outside for the ball to go in and around again. And it's only when there's opportune time for someone to make the run, straight when the ball comes in, who is going to make the run? Is it going to be Jota from outside to in? Is it going to be Salah from outside to in? Is it going to be played around until the opportune time for that ball to be worked into the box. And they're very, very patient in playing in between the lines. Now, if you imagine that Arsenal's players are marking up and trying to mark the opposition, we are very, very comfortable in our slot system to give these number 10, these number 10 players the freedom to get the ball in these positions, trusting that they can retain possession high up. Now, if you can play in this line right there, that is a nightmare for the opposition because basically you're playing keep ball in the most dangerous area and at any opportune time you can slip the ball through into the winger to get in behind playing it back or smashing it across goal or even if on the angle shooting across goal as well which means that the defenders have to be super super alert at all times especially because they if they win the ball back you've got presses and closes straight away in the trap you'd expect all your players to be pushing high up to pressure the opposition so as soon as they come, the trap is set. As soon as they win the ball, the trap is set to try to retain the ball back. And they've got a line in front of them waiting to press them again to turn over the ball to attack with style and pizzazz again and again. Now, that is another thing around setting the traps. And I'm going to reset the board and, and explain what I mean. What I'm resetting the board is very, very interesting to note that um, Curtis Jones did a clarification interview with Redmond TV explaining how his words were taken out of context. It wasn't his disrespecting Jurgen Klopp's system. He was just trying to highlight that this new system is ideal for him. He doesn't want to be part of the rotation anymore. He wants to be a first team starter in the centre mid. And because we build through the centre mid positions, a baller like him who likes to get on the ball and play, pass and move, 
Probably fits him a lot more than um, waiting to shunt Trent and Robertson out wide with the ball to create from the outlets from the sides flanks. So good to see. Well done, Redman TV. Now what is very, very interesting to see as well, I told you that Mo Salah is going to be a wide playmaker, but even the starting positions, right? When Arsenal have the ball and they didn't get too much joy in the first half, it was a 50-50 clash. We were up 2-1. They only scored because of some fumbles, some second balls on the, the set-piece plays. Arnold Slot intimated as well. He wasn't happy with how he reacted to the second ball on the set-piece play, conceding in a dodgy, jammy way. Kai Havertz rolling in. Not the best um, not the best endorsement for, for the beautiful game for, for Arsenal and of our defending. But what we have in possession, right? We play with this kind of formation. This is the Milan Christmas tree with the inverted diamond attack, okay? The inverted diamond attack, and they can transition, probably Carvalho and Elliot transition more than Mo Salah. Mo Salah stays predominantly on, on the right-hand side. But what you have in this position is you give the space, you sacrifice the space on the whips, okay? So Jota, Jota will harry, harry, and harass, harass. The ball gets played, the ball gets played out wide, and it's only when Arsenal find the pockets to get into this position, get into this position here or get into this position, the press is instigated. Simicas, Jones, Carvalho crunching. In this player, Carvalho cuts the pass back, Elliot jumps in, Jones blocks the channel into this player. These play back up in case it somehow worms through and Simicas closes in. We are trying to play containment on the whips. Yeah, Arna Slot is very, very willing to block the center blockade the center and trust the players to be wide defenders now we have a lot of quality wide defenders in the squad joe gomez is a quality wide defender bradley is a quality wide defender sobers can defend the whips as well konate van dyke speak for themselves we have an abundance of quality wide defenders it's not as though we have like sammy hippie or honcho who are trying to be dragged out wide every single player in our team is capable of defending 1v1 and in the system and in a zonal press to sh to shunt them into areas of containment or for them to deliver a weak ball a floated ball across a weak drive a weak shot which you expect your goalkeeper to eat up and then set Salah away straight away okay speaking of Jomez Maldini there's rumors flying around that 45 million would be enough for us to sell him we'd consider selling him and perhaps he put in a word at the start of the season if he's not going to be a starter he's like 27 years old now he probably wants to get international honors and recognition as well that we could find a suitable deal that suits all parties he may be allowed to leave he was involved in a deal with Anthony Gordon 75 million 45 million for Joe Gomez 30 million net difference it would have been a fantastic transfer except for the fact that they managed to sell Yakuba Minte and balance their financial fair play but Anthony Gordon would still be a really worthwhile asset I made a previous video around how we need a ginger ninja in our squad a quality ginger to bring us up there and he kind of counts doesn't he he can also play on the right hand side that is something that's underrated because for Everton predominantly he played on the right as well as the left he's multifaceted so we have players like Lucho Diaz Anthony Gordon, Diogo Jota, who can play on both sides, and that is a valuable, valuable asset, and pace absolutely kills, and he would look fantastic in a red shirt. A boyhood red, Anthony Gordon, come on home. he will be a nice signing. Wait and see if it happens. Because obviously, they're coming back from the Euros as well. They've had extended time off. I think Jomez Maldini, Joe Gomez, and Anthony Gordon were um, in the Euro 2024 squad when this deal was kind of agreed in principle, and they were allowed to go to RB Leipzig one hour drive away from the base the Euro camp in Euro 2024 for England, but it never really materialized. But it's interesting to see because I understand we would like Joe Gomez in the squad. He's versatile, covers the whole back line, left back, right back, center back, homegrown as well. Always dependable, reliable, never kicks up a fuss, never causes a stir really. What was that hassle with Raheem Sterling causing a kerfuffle in the international camp? Forget Raz. Anyway, I value us just a little bit. If Joe Gomez wants to leave, he's our most senior player retained from previous seasons. We owe it to him to allow him to go. And 45 million is a decent fee as well. And if we can bring in a replacement, or if Seth Vandenberg is indeed a replacement, but then what about Matip? Are we saying that Jarrell Quantas has replaced Matip? But then Anthony Gordon would be a great, great addition to our attacking line and a really, really high caliber signing who has room to improve, room to grow, strikes fears and heart of defenders, goes direct for the throat and gets assists and goals as well. Okay, so let's get back to the tactical board. Now, it's very, very encouraging that Mo Salah and Diogo Jota have come back sharp and fit. They're pressing, harassing, have always been on top par, especially because Mane and Firmino press better than Salah, but Salah looks really up for it. I think Carvalho still has some room to improve in, in the pressing department. Elliot tries his best in Endeavour, but sometimes he gets bypassed as well. But in the back line, Jarrell Quanta, goal line clearance, diving slide tackle to save from Gabriel Jesus, open goal set, Vandenberg's recovery pace is a vital asset. They are both serviceable in the air as well. Connor Bradley didn't have the most imposing game, struggled a little bit with Martinelli, but it's only preseason. Martinelli can do it against any defender, to be honest. 
what I'm really, really encouraged by is we managed to get Sobersly in the attacking pressing areas more often than not. And the fact that we set up with the number 10s camped outside of their box, I love that style of play because that shows confidence to play on the front foot, get the ball in front of you and play make from there. Whether it's a ball in from this way or whether it's shunting Carvalho in here and getting Jones on the overlap and Simicast back up as well. Really, all of our players seem to know their role in the transitions, in the rotational fields of play as well. And we always seem to create lateral passing options. Now, you know, you've seen it at Feyenoord, but you also see it at Brighton, the fact that when you pass the ball onto the man, pass the ball onto the man, not every player makes the immediate move to makes the immediate darting run. It seems to be when it's the third man or fourth man on the overlap that the initial player will make the run, make the run to support, make the run to get into the prominent area. And that's what we saw for the goals as well. I'm really, really encouraged by the fact that our defensive discipline seems to be on point in limiting the opposition's chances to counter-attack as well. Because you would think having so many players in the 10 high line allows the opposition to counter-attack really, really quickly, bypass through the midfield. But it doesn't, because the fact that our defenders are stepping up and the fact that they're willing to run vert on the verticals backwards as well and make that power cube, power cube Shakiri, hello, is, is very, very encouraging to see. And it seems as though the plan is very, very clear on the defensive transition where you need to go, the prominent areas to stop the counter-attack and to get into positions to influence the game. Especially when we were outnumbered and we we're running there, they seem to still defend centrally because they allowed they allowed Odegaard to play the ball out wide down the lines and trusted that we could minimise the impact, minimise the effectiveness of them getting something effective in. And Odegaard played the whole game. I don't know if it's a fitness issue or whether Arteta's a sore loser and he really wanted to do one on the slot. But in the second half as well, we played the kids, we played the youngsters. It's very, very interesting. As I mentioned before, Wataru Endo and Bacetic, right, they are going to be the double pillars of support at the base of the midfield to win back the board, hold the position and to bring the youngsters to prominence because Bacetic does count as a senior player now. And I knew Wataru Endo would be the man to lead the youngsters to glory in cup victories, in all the victories involving the youth because of his experience and his leadership. And in the absence of Virgil van Dijk, in the absence of Alison Becker, even in the absence of Andy Robertson, you need a calm head to walk the players through the game and always be an option, and then get the ball and give it back to him. Give the ball back to the youngsters, give them a time to shine, and that's exactly what Tyler Endo's role. People misunderstand the gravitas of having such an experienced leader in the locker room and on the field. I'll put that analogy in pro wrestling. Even though a pro wrestler might look like they're getting beaten up and absolutely battered and losing, what they're doing is putting over their opponent, letting their opponent showcase their abilities, showing their qualities. They'll put the graft, the hard work, the experience to kind of carry the match. And the analogy in football is to win the ball, to get the ball, but then you give it to the youngsters to allow them time to shine, or you give it to the more effective players for their time to shine, which is why he releases Gravin Birch, McAllister, Sobber Sly to do their thing, releases Curtis Jones and Elliot, Elliot to do their thing. But in the youngster lineup, he gets the ball and gives it to them to give them a chance to show their qualities, to impress Arna Slot, to raise their morale and their confidence and time on the ball. Because it's only in the clutch moments, such as when he's playing for the national team in Japan, that he needs to get on the ball and show his influence box to box, play make as well as play centre back, cover the channels and pick up loose balls and play make the tempo from deep as well. So he is a facilitator. He's not just a destroyer and anchor man. He plays the role according to what the coach needs and what the rest of the teammate needs to thrive. And that's an intangible asset that people miss from Wataru Endo. And then let's bring out a word for Troy and Yoni as well, right? Troy and Yoni, he is an absolutely masterful player and he's only, what, just hit 17? I know there's comparisons with Paul Pogba in terms of abilities and attributes, hopefully not mentality, but he also reminds me of Chesk Fabregas. When Chesk Fabregas broke through the ranks in Arsenal, 16 years old, going to 17 years old, he always wanted the ball. He pivots in a tiny, tiny circle. You can't dispossess him. He's press resistance. He's got game intelligence. He's got techers. He's got skills. He's got a through ball and he's got a shot. He's got everything. He looks like a potential world beater in the, world beater in the making. Him and Kobe Mainu. I know he's a Man United prospect, but he's a quality player as well. They look like the next up and coming total ballers in central midfield. And just a quick word on Man United, by the way. It's unfortunate for their new signing, Lenny Euro. I think he's fractured his metatarsal out for three months. Ouch, what a start. But um, hey ho, Man United, right? And Erasmus Hoyland out for six weeks as well. It piles up on all their youngsters. I feel sorry for these Man United fans waiting, you know, for preseason to go well. But apparently Eric Ten Hag has a bad injury record with all his teams. Maybe puts them through the ringers way too much and uh, the body ain't coping, so... However, Liverpool's injury record looks to be very, very good. Curtis Jones shrugged off a niggling injury, came off in the last match. Maybe precautionary, even if you like um, have a misplaced shin pad or something, you've got to sub yourself off because you don't want that shin pad to cause any Velcro friction on your shins. I digress a little bit, just kidding. 
But the fact that Fabio Carvalho can turn a man and get his foot on the ball, play in closed spaces, right, really gives him an opportunity to get involved in this team because he, even though he starts out wide, kind of like the Phil Foden role for England, he doesn't have to stay out wide. He drifts in and he can be, because Arneslot places free in front of the defence, he can have opportunities to transition in there. And we have natural players like Simicast and Robertson to hold width anyway. So I think he does have a role to play this season if we wanted to attack from the left-hand side in terms of playmaking. But Mo Salah obviously is a dominant player in the making in the central playmaking positions because he's just of that higher caliber right and he's a goal winner that finish whew, that is the, the prime Mo Salah and I think when the full squad comes in with McAllister with Nunes with Alisson Becker right when the full squad is here you really really start to see the makings of the total total Dutch philosophy football domination control power and overcoming any shape the opposition want to set up Trent Alexander-Arnold is our secret weapon as well because when you have so many players playing through the midfield and if he finds a way to get himself in the right half space or on the base or on the right side of Mazzala position or in the eight or as one of the number tens he's going to silk finesse the ball either into Darwin Nunes to tap it in over the top to Diogo Jota to pull it back or to score himself or smash it himself this football is a sexy sexy brand of football and I'm really really all for it and I cannot believe that Arna Slot has managed to get Liverpool playing in this fashion so quickly considering the time he's had with some of these players especially the youngsters the tactical shape the opportunities we're fashing out, we are making goal scoring opportunities, outsmarting Mikel Arteta already. Dominant preseason, winning two games on the bounce. The defensive shape of the youngsters working hard and showing they've got a bit about them. And even winning by one goal margin is very, very encouraging because you need to scrape out those victories and hold on tight. And I have more confidence in it confidence in his game management ability just because he seems like a tactical freak in terms of the nth degree making sure the players know exactly what they need to do to minimize the chances for the opposition to have a goal scoring opportunity or at least move them into a position of less prominence and whilst Arsenal are silky on occasion and look to have possession play and they did really really well in terms of dummy runners slide ball through looks offside but no it's actually the third man coming from deep running onto the ball I still like the way that this Liverpool team looked. They've got personality, authority, and when you add leadership to that, it's a great combination. Now, you do need perspective and balance when analysing these type of matches because Arsenal did have their moments, did have their opportunities as well. Our system would be slightly different when we do have that striker you know, coming back with Darwin Nunes makes those diagonal runs. There will be a bit more emphasis on directness. We went from back to front on occasion as well. Kelleher got caught in possession and lost the ball a few times. Curtis Jones dwaddled and lost possession a few times. He needs to stamp that out of his game. But Arnestot's game is based on building up through the midfield and being brave, hitting the ball into the space to grab and birch ball in front of the player to have to turn and go forwards. And in that effect, you will lose the ball on occasion. We will turn over the ball on occasion, but it's about minimising the effect of that. As a team, back up your buddies, make sure they don't look too bad because it's a system that allows you to play on the front foot and allows you to dominate with the ball and you have to trust that philosophy to the nth degree as well because even if you turn over the ball, work as a team to get it back. If a player makes a mistake, work as a team to cover him. Minimise the opposition's chances in turning your mistakes into something tangible, into a goal threat, into a shot on goal. However, saying that, we've still got the leadership crew to come back, Alison Becker, Virgil van Dijk, Joe Gomez to come back as well. Ibu Kanate is working his way back. Graven Birch is still yet to really, really have an impact in, in the preseason. Darwin Nunes will have a big say on what we do. Cody Gakpo will have a big say on what we do, as will Lucio Diaz, right? The squad looks strong, and we are going to get a player in the front, in through the door, whether it's Anthony Gordon, whether it's a centre-back, whether it's a number six. I'm excited, man. I think we'll get at least two signings. Okay, this is how I would have plotted to beat Arsenal with what we had. I actually simulated it in a Football Manager in, in the Premier League season. And just before we get to that, I've got to open a piece of merch because, you know me, I love my merch. This is Channel Substance and Abundance. We're the cream of the crop. The cream of the crop! And I've plucked this white package right here, so let's get into it. I don't know where I put my cutter, so I'm going to use a nail cutter. <laughs> okay, it's red. And Liverpool badge right there. It's a jacket, it's an Adidas jacket. Adidas jacket, Carlsberg on the back. It's ridiculously hot at the moment. Been through the ring is a bit, a bit of wear and tear there. It's been um, washed thoroughly, so. Okay, interesting. Probably can't wear this until the, the winter time, but I'm all good. I love my merch and this is banded for comfort to make sure it's a windbreaker. Are these called windbreakers? I think this is called a windbreaker. But what I really like about this one is the neck is so padded. It's none of that scratchy scratch in the neck. This is a comfort, luxury for sure. And maybe the reason why it's padded is because it's a hidden, 
with a hidden hood. Inside the Velcro, the hood pops up. There we go. Here's a windbreaker. Let's get this on. All right, now this must have been through a lot of history because Carlsberg, that's like ancient, isn't it? He has a Julio. Is it Benitez as well? Can't remember. I think it's Benitez. Okay, M size, I'm ready for winter training. Come give me some preseason. I'm not going to preseason this, but I will do some shorts in, in the gym, by the way, because as I mentioned, I'm working on that dad bod. And if I get 5,000 views back to back, I will do some giveaway of merch, five shirts to give away, five pieces of kit to give away, as well as the chocolates and the goodies. But look, look at this. It's a windbreaker. Actually, it's not as hot as I thought. I might wear it in the summertime because I need to prevent those Miyazaki UV rays. I don't want too much of a tan. But yeah, check out my FM effort against Arsenal. I've just realised that my FM video against Arsenal, right, my Liverpool preparation, I did the full pre-talk, I did the tactical setup, I went through the reasonings of why I did it as well. We watched a match play through, it took 20 minutes. I talked way, way too much because I went through a tactical setup, I went through the match itself, I went through the post-match conference, I went through some transfers, I went through some other goodies. If you want to see that FM Football Manager 2024 playthrough, my setup of Liverpool against Arsenal, I changed the formation, gave him a little surprise, little diamond cutter right there, bang! Um, let me know in comments below. If you want to see it, I will upload it in the next video fairly shortly, maybe even tonight, for example. But yeah, I don't want to make this video too long. It'd be like an extra 15, 20 minutes to this video. And this video is all about us beating Arsenal in preseason. They now have that defeat lingering in their mind. The prince that was promised, the shiny one, has overcome the pretender in the wind. And Mikel is left scratching his head again. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash a like. Every comment helps this video get seen. Beat the algorithm as well. I love the interaction. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Big shout out to Tim J and Slev Rules, the newest members of Liverpool Fan in Japan Members Club. The next Wataru Endo chapter is going to be translated as well as the first video in his exclusive library of Japanese content for his fans in Japan. Stay tuned. Membership's cheaper than a stale piece of sliced cheesecake, so you might as well join. Give it a go. Until next time, Miyazaki Man. Ichiban means number one, means the best. Jane means ciao.